999 players have already fallen as we enter day three of the Barcelona main event. Okay, guys. With the money bubble set to burst, the tension is palpable. I don't want min cashes. Today, I'm going for broke. Right now, I'm just in it to win it. You're picking your spots, you're a lot more calculated and careful. Several former champions are chasing their second title. The APT is so big now, has so many players. It's very difficult to win too. Making the money is one step closer to victory as amateurs and pros dream of winning the coveted EPT trophy. Twelve hundred and thirty-four players registered for the tenth PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona main event. That's more than five times the size of the field in the first ever EPT in two thousand and four. Back then, the top prize was eighty thousand euros, which is dwarfed by the one million plus that awaits this year's eventual winner. Last time, Kevin McPhee was crushing at the feature table, while Liv Barry went from boom to bust. And Victor Ramden got old school with Theo Jorgensen. This is the way I need to play to win this tournament. ABC doesn't work anymore. And now, as day three begins, the bubble is approaching. Just 52 eliminations to go until we hit the money, and then everyone is guaranteed a slice of the 6 million euro prize pool. And as a result of that bubble, there is a high pressure system developing across the tournament area here but we're also tracking a trio of former Barcelona champions approaching from our three feature tables here, here, and here. And those three former champs are Alex Stevich, Mikolai Pabal, and Kent Lundmark. Yes. In season seven of the EPT, Kent Lundmark cashed in four main events, including his Barcelona win. It's one of the biggest tournaments you can win in poker, so it's just amazing. Mikolai Pabal is the short stack at our feature table, but the reigning champ still has a shot at retaining his title and earning back-to-back -back million euro paydays. The original champion has returned. Alexander Stevich is looking to prove that he's still got it, or is at least still lucky. I consider myself to be one of the luckiest guy in the world. I won the first one, believing the whole way that I would win the first one. I have a good feeling and I really honestly believe that I deserve it. The best day in an EPT main event is the final table, but bubble day comes a close second. Stevich seems like a nice enough guy to me. I'm cool with him being lucky. Kent Lundmark! You know, I heard Sweden wanted to change their currency to the Lundmark, but Kent's way too modest. Albert de Haar is one of the chip leaders coming into day three. Lehu de Hair. Allah, Allah, oxen free. It doesn't seem like that other guy's just running because Allah was running. It's like he doesn't even know what he's running for. Oh, there he is again. Look at Kurgadov coming in like he owns the joint. Those are my chips, and those are my chips. Yep, those two. Yep, uh huh. And it looks like Alexander Stevich has been spotted by Alessandro Monticciolo. These two were adorable together in day two. Look at this, it's like a stock photo for two old friends reuniting. Who gave scissors to Christoph de Mulder? Does no one remember last time? Six stitches! It's the dude, that or his dudeness, duder or El Duderino, if you know, you're not into the whole brevity thing. Kevin must be Vander Smith and his parents. What is he, writing a letter home? And Mikolai Pabal is writing an essay entitled, Why I Will Never Again Forget to Bet the Nuts. Well, Fernandez, Van der Smissen, and the short stack Pabal are joined on the main stage by four Scandies, including Finland's Passi Sormanen and the amusingly named Morten Mortensen. Sweden's Lucas Berglund is the chip leader at our eight-handed feature table. Blinds 2,000, 4,000 with a 500 ante. Come on, Morten Mortensen, who's up next? Hans Hansen? Well, we've got Seattle Hansen who's got ace-queen suited in the hijack. That's a pretty good hand. 
Action's been folded to him. And he is raising. He makes it 10,500. Action folded around to Mikolai Pabal in the big blind. Ace King. That's it. Back to back for Pabal. I'm calling it right now. All in. He moves all in. Not much more for Hansen to call. I call. He does call. This is just your standard run of the mill cooler with those stacks. The chips are never not going in. Pabal, 68% favorite to double up. Well, make that 94%. Real tough for Hansen to win this now. The turn card is a heart, gives us a sweat. Hope springs eternal. Hope is dead. Nikolai Pabal doubles up. Being railed here in Barcelona this year by his wife, Tanya, who last year had to watch his win on the internet. Really? They were together before he won. Nice hand, sir. Pabal now playing a stack of 104,000, still significantly below average. Let's head over to the secondary feature table. Right. Albert the Hare is just shoved on Kent Lundmark. Oh, no. Lundmark with kings. De Hare with a straight draw and a flush draw. If you're going to make a massive bluff, it's generally best to do it when you have more outs than a baseball game. Kent is ahead, but he probably knows that when he's ahead, he's still going to have to fade a quarter of the deck. Lundmark faults. And that play was a terrible, a terrible. It was good. I meant it was good. Well, that was a big pot, and it sees Albert de Hare retake the chip lead in this tournament. We've got three Brits in the top ten. Neil Farrell, Tom Middleton, and online qualifier Ryan Spittles. This is the deepest any of our qualifiers has ever gone, which is a little misleading since it's only our second one, and we picked him after the first one went broke. But whatever, go get him, Ryan! He's bet 27,000 on the river. Massimo Moselli. Folds. Nicholas Adolfsson. Also false. Go, Ryan. I'm really pulling for Ryan here because if we have to make a third pick in the same tournament, that is not going to look good for us. Ryan up to 452,000. He's got more than double the tournament average. Other players not so lucky. Alexandro Deliano with just seven big blinds among those clinging on to just get into the money. You're Romania. Mad Marvin is recently single and has decided to pick up Victor Ramden as his wingman. You made a wise choice, my friend. Very good. Well said, Victor. Well said. While we're out in the field, let's check on another team pro, Aniel Guillen. Oh, he's out. Well, that's awkward. Why did we pick this moment? At least we've still got several former champs in the field, including Kevin McPhee. 196 left, 183 paid. Wow, we are right up on the old bubble, eh? You think McPhee McMakes it? Well, I'm in cash is worth just over eight and a half thousand euros. The big sums are up top. More than a million for the winner, along with that lovely shiny trophy. Back at the main feature table, action is on Josef Bakar. Kind of looks like my Aunt Mary, although I'm not sure who I'm insulting there. He folds. Lucas Berglund, who won a WPT event here in Barcelona in 2011, will raise from the cutoff with pocket nines. Action folded to the big blind. Passy Sormanen has five six off. More like Passy Sourpuss. What's up with this guy? He's Finnish. He's stoic. Explains why he's loose as a goose, too. The flop is Jack-9-4, all hearts. Middle set for Berglund. Pretty disappointing flop for Sormanen, but remember, he was already making that face before. He checks. He does have a heart in his hand. Berglund expected to continue. And does for 11,000. Getting value already. Sormanen calls. Sorman and maybe looking to make a play for this pot later. I think he's going to be sorely mistaken. Ten of diamonds on the turn. Not the best board for a set, but not one you can really get away from either. And Sormanen will now lead the turn for 17,000. I think Posse would have been better off A, trying this on the river, and B, maybe making it an amount that could actually get someone to fold. Sormanen recently had a deep run in an EPT main event, finishing 15th in London last season. Well, Berglund calls the 17k. We're off to the river. Painstaking call. Come on. Ace of spades. Posse's going to think this is a good river to bluff. 
And Lucas is going to think this is a great river to fist pump call. 37,000. Berglund doesn't look overly happy. I do like that posse went bet, bet, though. If he bets the turn, he's got to bet the river. Yeah, he calls. Six high any good? No? Okay. Strangely enough, he's beaten by a set of nines. Well, you were that strong. Well, that was a wide range of facial expressions. And this is only one. Suppressed joy. You were too good. Too good looking. I didn't know One Direction was in town. Well, the big stat gets bigger. Berglund now has 390,000. Let's head back to the outer tables. Alexander Stevich has raised from the hijack to 8,000. Omri Benoni has called out of the small blind. So we're going heads up to the flop here. That flop is Queen 10 Deuce. With two diamonds. Benoni checks. Stevich continues for 11,000. Check, bet, fold. Standard. Very important card. Ooh, I can see those lessons have been paying off. Alas, Alexander Stevich's new best buddy is not faring so well in the EPT Barcelona main event. Alessandro Monticello, out. Oh no, I loved him. Ciao, fratello. Who are your favorites in the field here in Barcelona? Take your tweets, EPT. <sighs> another day, another ridiculous costume. It's not ridiculous because today, we're going to the bullfights. You know bullfighting's bad. I did not know that. How much did you pay for these bullfighting tickets? A lot. We are fast approaching the bubble at Casino Barcelona in the Pokestars.com EPT main event as more players make their way to the exit, including some EPT regulars. Hope Covert Metal brought his raincoat because he just got showered. Igor Kurganov will get the water hot for you, get the soap ready, put on some slippers so you don't get athlete's foot showered. We've also lost the runner-up in EPT7 Copenhagen. Perlinda's running into some bad weather, partly cloudy with a 100% chance of getting showered. Blinds 2,000-4,000 with a 500 ante. Action at the feature table is on Seethel Hansen. Pretty hand. He raises with Queen Jack suited. From under the gun, plus one, he makes it 10,500. Action folded around to Leo Fernandez. Ace Jack. Yes, I am Leo. I am contemplating what to do. He's in late position. And he's going to play aggressively from late position. Three betting to 23K. And this is actually kind of turning his hand into a bluff. Joseph Bacar in the small blind decides to fold, as does Lucas Berglund in the big blind. Action back on Hansen. Pretty good hand to take a flop with. Well, those blue chips are worth 5,000 each. The purples are 500, so that is a four bet to 46,500. Is there anyone at this table who doesn't want to turn his hand into a bluff? Leo folds the best hand. Hansen's play makes a little more sense than Leo's near the bubble, but it's risky. He did not have the stack to four bet fold. Hansen up to 156,000. 185 remain in the main event. We're two away from making the money, and we're hearing there's actually a player who didn't even show up this morning who's slowly being blinded out. Well, that's awkward. Mario Adnolfi had a deep run in this tournament in season eight. He's facing a raise from Christoph de Mulder. What's he looking at? Picture of the Pope? Stall much. Play does tend to slow down around the bubble. Wonder why that is. Adonolfi folds. Demolder wins the pot uncontested. Let's check on some of the short stacks, some of the players in the danger zone. Danger zone! Victor said he wasn't interested in a min cash. He may get his wish. Cedric Morlan has just over two big blinds. Alexandru Deleanu has just shy of three big blinds. 
I think he's fine. He's got like four chips. That's four times the required minimum for chip in a chair. On the chip side, he's only got one chair to my knowledge. Let's get across the room to table five. Simeon Nidanov has moved all in. Action on Danny Kavane. He calls. All in call on five. Andler gets out of the way. I am no body language expert, but I think Kovane's ahead. <laughs> I'm the bubble boy, yes. Nidanov is a four to one underdog. Bigger dog now. Needs a nine on the river. Doesn't get it. But he is not the bubble boy. He's the bubble bubble boy. We are down to 184. Stop the clock. We've reached the bubble. Okay, attention, main event. We have 184 players, and we're going to continue hand for hand. Dealers, if you have an all-in call, you must stop and call the floor and the cards must stay face down. Let me take a photo first, okay? Hello Kitty, Quo. Okay. Tag it Survivor. <laughs> Hashtag Survivor. <laughs> so we're gonna play one hand. We'll wait for play to conclude at every other table in the room before we start the next one. Berglund, racing from the cutoff with nine deuce of diamonds. Trying to go all thief here on the bubble. 7-5 of diamonds for Passy Sormanen in the big blind. And this would be kind of a loose defend. He calls. And what a flop for Berglund. 9-9 nine, nine deuce for a full house. Flops him deed. Sormanen checks. And folds before Berglund's had a chance to bet. <laughs> <laughs> One check. Luckily, no diamonds. I had seven, eight diamonds. So, three diamonds. Ooh. Seven, eight of diamonds, <laughs> huh? Lol. Remember, the next player to bust walks away with nothing. Yeah, I was thinking that this table would be the one who, who was like breaking the bubble. Like, like, yeah, that's There's always next hand. And we're just waiting for play to conclude at all of the outer tables. Attention players, as soon as the last hand is finished, I will close the book. We have three tables with an open call. Three? What happens if more than one person goes broke again? They will chop 183rd place prize money. Buka, let's see your cards first, please. Buka shows two nines for a pair of nines. Cedric shows queen seven for a pair of queens. You have to show. It's an all in here. And Nils shows ace five. Our all-in player has doubled up. We don't lose a player on table number 12. Look at them all congratulating him. We're all in this together. Not really, but still it's cool. <laughs> well, as Toby heads across the room, don't forget there is a player who didn't show up today and is now close to being blinded out. Yeah, but do the players know that? John has ace king. So Russell is our all-in player with a pair of jacks. Let's see the flop, please. We've got a race here. Classic race, made even more classicer by the bubble. There's a jack! Flop is jack, 10, 9, Russell is it top trips. There is a possibility of a middle pin for a straight. Next card is an 8, it's 8, 9, 10, jack. Russell is still ahead. And the final card, please. Oh, and they can chop too. Final cards are 4, we do not lose a player on table number 21. Two all-ins, two survivals. We're going to go to our next table where we have an all-in call. It's Stevich's table. Can we go three for three? <laughs> Mihails is our all-in player, but there is no flop. Mihails has ace of spades, queen of clubs, and Alexander is our player with a pair of nines. Another race. The flop is two, three, king, and the turn. The turn is a jack. The final card, please. It's a ten. Gets there. Rivers are straight. He's the real champ. The real one. Oh, have to win this tournament. <laughs> Thanks, guys. This is the sweetest bubble ever. Three players were all in. No one busted. I know. No. Ten on river. <laughs> There's the anti-railing you come to expect on a gigantic bubble. Alexandru Delianu now has just two and a half big blinds. Yeah, but what about that guy that's not here? Well, they've called the tournament director over because he's still absent and he's about to be put all in in the big blind. He said he did not show up the entire day. Yeah, the whole day. 
Yeah. Yeah. It did not come. Yeah. Okay. Easy money. Maybe it's just pocket change. Yeah. Attention, main event players. We have a very unique situation over here. We have one player who hasn't showed up today and he's going to be all in on the big blind. So he will be eliminated in this hand. If we lose two players from that table, the player with the biggest chips is going to take the highest finishing position. If we lose two or three or four players from different tables, the money will be split between you guys and the player on the big blind. Hope the guy's all right. I can only think of a few reasons I'd voluntarily miss day three of a tournament. All of them involve twins. Well, the absent player has been identified as Nuno de Camara from Portugal. He was due to start day three with a 21 big blind stack. No one has any idea where he is or why he's not here. So once again, just to be sure, if I bust out right now, we share the money. With we share the, the I share the money with the bubble. With the bubble. Okay. Well. Stop the clock in the main event, please. Stop the clock in the main event. We do have an all-in. Okay, we're over on table number five. Stefan is our all-in player. Let's see your cast, please, Stefan. Stefan oh, has two aces. Ace that's of why. Diamonds, ace of clubs, and Christopher has three of hearts, six of clubs. Let's see the club, please. We're all rooting for the aces here, right? Club is two, eight, ten, two of hearts, eight of diamonds, ten of diamonds. Stefan is ahead with a pair of aces. Turn card, please. The turn's a queen, another final card, please. Aces, double up. Okay, we do lose a player. You are all in the money. Congratulations, you've just cashed at EPT Barcelona. Weirdest bubble ever. We win, it's already done, we win price. Congratulations, everyone. For the first time ever, literally everyone in the room is happy. Now that we got to the money, we can fight. <laughs> you gotta fight for your right to min cash. A strange situation. We've no idea why Nuno didn't show up for day three, but he is our bubble boy, while Alex Stevich has cashed on his return to EPT Barcelona. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to pokerstars.com, where there are qualifiers every day. So I take it you're now over the whole fake ticket fiasco? Yeah, I got such a great deal on these pesetas that uh, I barely lost any money. Um, Spain's had the Euro for more than a decade. Those are worthless. Hold these. We've made it into the money at the PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona main event. And many players have already headed to the payout table to collect their min cash of 8,680 euros. The bubble is always filled with drama, but today was an extremely rare situation. We had a very unique situation uh, on the bubble. We had a player not show up for day three. The, the sack was still being blinded off as we were actually on the bubble and had less than 5,000 chips. I cannot imagine not being here except for maybe if I'm in prison. But still, if I would be in prison, I would find a way to get out and still get here. He could have cashed in because there were, was a few all-in hands before that. I was involved in one of them. One guy sucked out on the river to stay in the tournament. Should the tournament director announce it? Is it fair for that player or is it fair for everybody to know? I think everyone has to have the same information. Why does everything happen at my tournament? I have no clue how that guy could have missed the entire day, but it's good for us, I guess. We're going to deal one more hand. We have one player who hasn't showed up today, and he's going to be all in on the big lines. Well, our rule is if you're not at the table when the first card comes off the deck, then you have a dead hand. We have to have a physical player playing the cards. We have an all in on a call. Stefan is our all in player. When we heard the all-in and call, we were all a bit shocked. It was aces against 6-3. If the aces are eliminated, they're going to chop it with the player who's not there. If you have more than just a few big blinds, you should never fold aces in this spot. So uh, you, can, you definitely need to play tight, but not that tight. <laughs> you kind of have to move all-in with six blind, big blinds because everyone knows that you got it if you do it. So you, you will pick up the blinds. Never in my life I would be folding aces. I mean, I'd rather 
cut off my testicles. We've had people blinded out and not show up before, but never the, the literal bubble boy. And apparently Christoph de Mulder wanted to be the bubble eunuch. Blinds up to 2,500, 5,000 with a 500 ante. We are going to sweat with Leo Fernandez. Joe, I just want to say good luck. We're all counting on you. Thank you, my friend. Are we sure this is Leo Fernandez and not Jeff Lynn from ELO? I mean, they do have a song called Showdown. Action has been folded to Joseph Bacar. An early position raised to 10,500. Folded around to Kevin van der Smissen in the small blind. He's out. Leo Fernandez has Jack Queen off suit. Easy spot to defend our big blind. Nothing more, nothing less. No need to turn to stone. There's the call. That would have been an electric light three bet. The flop is ace 10 9. Fernandez has an open ended straight draw. Open ender, I like it. He checks to the razor. Continuation bet from Bakar of 10,000. Now I'm going to request that ELO smash hit telephone line because we need to call. Boom. A pot of 47,500. The turn card is the five of clubs. Well, that doesn't help Fernandez. Leo checks a second time. What is Bakar going to do? I'd love a free card. You're not going to get it. 25,000. I don't mind us chasing a straight in general. They get paid a little more because they're harder to make and are a little less obvious than a flush. I also think we can get paid because I don't think Bakar's bluffing very often here. Unless he's using some kind of strange magic. This needs to stop. Well, the hand's almost over. Just one more card to come. Leo check calls a second time. Let's go to the river. The Queen of Hearts. So Fernandez didn't get there with a straight. He has got second pair, though. Ugh, even though we improved into a pretty good pair, I think this is a pretty easy check fold. Let's see if Bacar bets a third time. Wow, he empties the clip with a virtual all-in. 60k of his remaining 86,000. Come on, man. Don't bring me down. Just fold here. Even though that queen is a sweet-talking woman, it's also an evil woman. We're losing, Mr. Blue Sky. Oh, thank heavens he's folded and this hand's at an end. Aces for Bacar. He flopped top set. Ah, eh, Bacar is not really a fan of classic rock, I guess. We played it just fine. We just missed. Ma, 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 bell. Do ya? Okay, Joe, I get it. You have an iTunes account. You've been doing your research. Other music services are available. Well, after that hand, Leo Fernandez is left with just 94K. Actions on Morton Mortensen. <laughs> okay, James Jameson. He faults. Seattle Hansen raises from the hijack with pocket sixes. Ace King for Passy Sormanen. That's a three bet from the cutoff. He re raises to 24,000. Kevin van der Smissen folds from the button. Leo Fernandez is in the small blind and has pocket jacks. Without three bet happy, everyone seems to be at this table. I think Jax is an easy shove here. Ooh, ooh, one more, David Guetta. And he is gonna play hard. Why couldn't you reference the one he did with Kelly Rowland? I like that one. It's coming up. Fernandez moves all in. Mikolai Pabal folds the big blind. Hansen gives up those sixes. But with ace king, Sormanen's calling. Sure enough, he puts Fernandez at risk. We have a race on our hands. Look at all those letters. If he loses a race, JJ to AK, this would definitely be an alpha beat. There's an ace on the flop. Fernandez now behind, drawing to two outs. He needs a jack on the river. A 5% chance of survival. It's an eight. We lose Leo Fernandez. Good game. No, oh, why couldn't I have had nines? This poker tournament can't even handle him right now. Fernandez eliminated in 158th place. Good for him in cash. Christoph de Mulder finds himself all in. Decision on Denis Pisarev. Hardingham, what is it you like to call this part of the tournament? The post bubble bust out bonanza. Love the alliteration. Pisarev's getting better than three to one. Oh. 
He calls, tabling Queen-9 suited. Christoph de Mulder is ahead with Jax. Pizarev was getting the right odds. Pizarev flops a nine, but Jax is still ahead for now. Not the safest of flops. Eight on the turn. That's more like it eliminates a bunch of Pizarev's outs. And a six. And a win. Yeah, my friend. You should get a name tag that I know the name of my friend. Becker. Becker. Boris Becker's now dealing on the EPT? Becker, Becker. Becker. Oh, okay. Becker. Hard times in the tennis world. Staying on the outer tables, Alex Stevic has just called an under the gun plus two raise. Action on Lukas Rosniak. And he will three bat. He re raises to 27,000. Called three bat out of the big blind, usually pretty strong. Fire Mars, the original raiser, folds. Stevic calls. We're going heads up to the flop. Loaded pot. King 10 deuce, all clubs. This board is wetter than a dog's nose. Continuation bet from Rosniak of 29,000. This is a tough call with no piece of this. Stevich calls. Nearly 130,000 in the middle. The eight of clubs on the turn. Check. Four flush. Action goes check, check. Let me guess, no one has a club. The river is the ace of spades. Check. Rosniak checks, Stevich checks. Ace king for Rosniak for top two. Sevens for Stevic with the seven of clubs. His flush is good. Neither player wanted to turn his hand into a bluff. Can't say I blame him. Both thought their hand might be good, but there can be only one. And that one is the original champion. At the secondary feature table, we've got a raising war between Albert De Gea and Stephen Watts. Watts shoves with top pair. Whoops. De Gea flopped the straight, he calls. I knew you had something, that's why I was gonna fold. That's sick, this is my name. Thanks, Dean. It's unbelievable what you're doing to me, man. But just check the turn, check back, it comes around. Just, just give me the card, good luck. Good luck, everyone. I said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Lose with class. You know that we have been having problems with Dean doing that. Kidding! Don't berate the dealer, dude. Stay classy, San Diego. Albert De Gea, still chip leader. That biggest cash, by the way, came just two weeks ago at a WPT event in Cyprus. My name is Albert De Gea. I'm 26 years old and I'm from Lebanon. I started playing poker uh, when I was 20, 21. I actually hated all the card games. But like, there's some, some friends of mine that, that told me you're gonna love it. We, we know you're gonna love it. I started playing every day, playing cash games at my house with my friends, and then switch a bit to online. And now I'm grinding the live tournament circuit. I actually played four EPTs total. I would love to get a title here, especially EPT. It's more prestigious than anything else would be great. Lebanon was country of the year at the EBT Awards season eight. Crazy that there's an EBT Awards. Victor Ramden is all in and behind. He shoved the flop with King Nine. He's been called by deuces. Only two cards to come. These two are just about flipping. Victor's got overs and some counterfeit outs. No, he doesn't. A deuce on the turn. Victor's drawing dead. Well, dealer, that was just brutal. What, have you been taking lessons from Dean? Well, let's head across the room. We've got another all-in. Marvin Rettenmeyer shoves with fives and walks into aces. I'm gonna go ahead and call Rettenmeyer Rottweiler because he is a huge dog. Ace on the flop. Rettenmeyer with less than 1% equity. Yikes. Drawing dead on the turn. Marvin Rettenmeyer follows Victor Ramdin out of the door. Hey Marvin, your right here! Poor Joe has wasted all his money. No quick-witted pun, no pithy one-liner, no whimsical glance at the camera, no mildly amusing physical gesture.
Mikolai Pabal, Kent Lundmark, and Alex Stevich are all still in the PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona main event. And these former champions have the chance to repeat their wins here in Spain. Конечно, это было событие очень значимое в моей жизни, которое многое поменяло. И этот год я провел, ездя по этапам ЕПТ, и, в принципе, уделяя много времени покеру. Я так не могу, конечно, судить, кто быстрее всего попадет, станет плывым чемпионом, потому что только покер рассудит, кто это заслужил. He's done it, the Swedish triumphed. Ken Lundmark is the champion. When I was playing the final table, a friend of mine told me, don't think uh, anything about the money, just do your best and you think about it after. I think uh, I'm gonna be the first two-time champion because I have the experience to get deep in tournaments and because I'm probably one of the best players in the field that's left now. After winning the first EPT, I thought I was really, really special and really, really good. Yes! And it took me a long time to realize that I was actually not really good. I was mediocre in tournaments. So I stopped and I played mostly live cash games. I still beat the easy games. I enjoy the game. And if you travel a lot, you can combine it with poker. I want to see all the countries in the world. I, that's what I've been doing mostly. I've always been thinking next year I will go and play tournaments because I like that it has grown so much. It's fun. I'm here to show the guys that I'm back and I, I have a good feeling again. I'm torn because Lundmark's my favorite player, but Stevich is so cute. Well, Lundmark's in action right now. His opponent, Antonio Brando, has bet 12,000 on the flop. Lundmark calls. We go to the turn. Can't Lundmark. Nine of clubs. Sweet float, by the way. Brando bets 17,500. Blind on blind. Brando would maybe do better to play this hand passively and get to cheap showdown. Now here comes the follow through on the float. Time to send Brando to the tomato garden. With just 10 high, Lundmark raises to 46,500 and gets a fold. If I had to sum up that awesome move in two words, it would be Kent Lundmark. Well, from the season seven champ to the reigning champ, sat at our feature table. Mikolai Pabal currently playing a stack of 107,500. Action here is on Passy Sormanen. Ace five. Man, I guess he could raise here if he wants to. He's in late position in the cutoff. Raise. And he will raise to 11,000. King Jack for Kevin Vandersmissen on the button. Yep, easy call on the button. He calls. Felix Stevenson has just arrived at the feature table. He falls from the small blind. Pabal gives up the big blind. Heads up to the flop. Nine five three rainbow. Sormanen was ahead pre-flop with ace high. He's ahead now with a pair of fives. He doesn't bet though. He checks. Vander Smithens Vander Smith this flop, but he may try to take it away now that it's been checked to him. Not likely to work. He makes it thirteen thousand. Nobody folds pairs these days. Nor should they, really. Hard to make a pair. That's a check raise. Sormanen makes it 29k. Well, this raise is baffling. If you think you have the best hand, you should let your opponent keep bluffing. If you don't have the best hand, there aren't too many hands you're going to get to fold that are beating you. As it stands, it looks like he's going to fold out a hand when he's got 75% equity. Or not. Van der Smissen calls. Okay, um, I'm wrong. Apparently. More than 90,000 in the middle. Another five on the turn. Trips for Sormanen. He's got a lock on the hand. And he doesn't continue. He checks. He's going for another check raise. Is Van der Smissen going to let him do it again? 
OMG, he is. Van der Smissen bets 24,000. Now, I know I'm going to look stupid when I say this because Posse's got by far the best of it, but so far he's been playing this hand super weird. He's going to do it again. Oh, it's a double check raise. 86,000. And Vandersmissen might assume he's bluffing because he should really never be playing a good hand this way. But what do I know? Maybe this is genius. Vandersmissen only has king high. And yet, he's calling again. If Vandersmissen tries to take him off the river, he's going to be Vandersmissen from this tournament. The river is a six. Go on, Patsy, check again. Go for the triple check raise. All in. Oh, he shoves instead. <laughs> Vandersmissen's hands are tied now. He folds, and Sormanen wins a huge pot. And I think Kevin got a little lucky there. Pretty sure he was going to punt that river. I was going to go all in. It was my move. And then I have to fold, so this, this way I win a pot. It's better. I saw you you were you were going all in on turn. Did you think about it? On turn, did you think about it? All in? No. Not a second. <laughs> okay. Can't tell if he really thought that or he's just saying it after the fact. Whatever. He played it super weird but got a ton of value somehow. Well done. As well as his deep run in EPT London, Passy recently won a 2K event back in Finland for nearly 70,000 euros. And look how happy he looks about it. Well, on this next hand at our feature table, we're going to play from Kevin van der Smissen's perspective. Thank God that last one wasn't a sweat with hand. I would have been unplugging all the monitors. Queen Jack. From under the gun, plus one, he raises to 11,000. So far, so standard. Stevenson and Pabal are out. Joseph Bacar. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to come along, sir? No. Folded around to the blinds. We've got two new players at the table. Stefan Kolosov and Ivan Kotov. Looks like Kotov has a decision. He elects to defend his big blind. We will see a flop. I should play approximately. 120, I guess. 110. Actually, 126,500. Wow, that is specific. Good job, us. Always going to be aware of stack sizes. Kotov checks, and Van der Smissen, even though he's missed the flop, will continue for 12,500. Standard is as standard does. Kotov calls. He's a little shaky. I'm cool with shutting down unless we improve. Well, Van der Smissen picks up an open-ended straight draw on the turn. Actually, this is a card we can keep firing on. The king could be a scare card, so maybe the double barrel will just work and we don't have to hit. Kotov checks a second time and Van der Smissen barrels for 26,500. How much? 26,500. Hmm. Seems pretty interested. Kotov calls again. That was a super dry flop, so I'm thinking he's going to have a 10 a lot when he stations. Eight of clubs on the river. Van der Smissen doesn't get there. Well, we missed. Kotov checks a third time. So we can check and definitely lose, or put this guy all on and maybe lose. Van der Smissen goes for the second option. He bets 100k, enough to put Kotov all in. Well, we put him in a tough spot, so we've got a chance. Please don't call, please don't call, please don't call. Cool. Ah! He calls. Jack high? Van der Smissen shows queen high. Cut off tables, 9-10. Wow, big call. He rode for his tournament life and he was right. N-H, sir, N-H. Ivan Kotov has had some results back in Ukraine. This is his first EPT cash. And after losing two big hands in a row, Kevin Van der Smissen is down to 148,500. Well, at the secondary feature table, we've got three-way action involving Alba de Haar, Douglas Souza, and Dermot Blaine. Blaine way ahead with a set of fours. 90,000 apiece on the flop. The turn card, 
The seven of diamonds. This could be real trouble for Jax. Action check to Blaine. He bets 48,000. I like the bet. I think there are lots of pairs and draws that can and will pay him off. Souza calls with Jax. And De Gea raises to 120,000. And there's not much Blaine is losing to, but he maybe doesn't want to seem too eager. Colin. He shoves. Tough spot for Jax. Souza wisely lays the hand down. Nice fold. And De Gea with his draw will also fold. Nice play, Dermot. Proud of you. He's up to over half a million. Albert De Gea down to 836,000. On the outer tables, Alex Stevic heads up against Lukas Rosniak once again. Stevic checks the turn. Rosniak bets 22K. Stevic calls. Jack on the river. Stevic checks again. And Rosniak checks behind. Show me a winner. Ace, deuce for Stevic. Ace, five for Rosniak. Chop it up. Oh, and I showed my ace, and he started to show his, and then I didn't feel to it. And you know what they say, Joe? Everyone, Everyone loves a chopped pot. pot. Chopped pot. Christoph de Mulder is on the move, taking a seat at this table alongside Brit Neil Farrell. And another Brit, our online qualifier, Ryan Spittles. Our qualifier looks like he could use a little more kindling. Cocktails, table, whatever that is. Well, another Brit is all in. The big favorite to double up. In a huge pot. This is a battle between two big stacks. And Tom Middleton just has to fade a jack on the river. He gets a double up to 947,500. That double up wasn't huge, it was huge. So halfway through day three, Tom Middleton now leads the pack with close to a million ahead of Albert De Gea. Season eight runner up, Dragan Kostic is riding high on the leaderboard and currently playing a near average stack is the EPT1 champion, Alexander Stevich. It's been really great and I had a really good feeling. My, my confidence has been boosting a lot by all these great people and stuff. So now actually, I believe in miracles. I mean, it's been a lot of up and down, but um, the road uh, to victory is always like that. Next time, the last Team Pro standing is put through the ringer. What do you have? Full house? You have a full house? It's a good hand. <laughs> The same bar. And three previous Barcelona champs try to survive the day. Well, still alive. Who has what it takes to make it to day four?